going to do something different compared to my other two videos that I release. So I'm going to show you my screen and what I'm reading. So we're going to begin with chapter three. And uh, I was curious about what others say. These are my previous look research with my younger sister and we were joking with it and they actually say 50 shades because I was curious if it's just if the book is similar to the fan fiction and in the movie you can say I'm 50 shades of fuck up like the top one right here this top one and I heard people complaining that in a goddess and a goddess so much about 153 in the last one the oh my one there's about 220 matches from what I heard from other people interesting chapter 3 my heart is pounding with when the lift arrives on the first floor I scramble out as soon as the door is open stumbling once fortunately not sprawling on to the floor I head for the wide glass doors and then I'm in the bracing cleansing damp air of Seattle I raise my face to welcome the cool refreshing rain closing my eyes trying to recover what's left of my equilibrium taking a huge purifying breath no man has ever affected me the way Edward Calling has and I don't know why is it his good looks his capability wealth power I just don't understand my irrational reaction I breathe an enormous sigh of relief what in heaven's name was that all about? I lean against one of the steel pillars of building, gathering my thoughts, calming down. I shake my head, feeling more myself as my heart steadies to its regular rhythm, and I'm breathing normally again. I head for the car. As I leave the city limits behind me, I begin to feel foolish and embarrassed. Surely I'm overreacting to something that I'm imagining. Okay, so he's very attractive, confident, commanding, so at ease with himself. But on the flip side, he's also arrogant in spite of his impeccable manners. I don't know how to say that. He's very autocratic and cold, well on the surface and an involuntary shiver runs down my spine. He may be arrogant, but he's accomplished so much at such a young age. And I can tell he doesn't suffer fools gladly. Why should he? I am irritated again that Rose didn't give me a brief biography. I think about the interview itself. I'm truly perplexed as to what makes someone so driven to such success and some of his answer was so cryptic like he had some hidden agenda no and some of Rose questions ugh, the adoption and asking him if he was gay I can't believe I say that I'm mortified anew I know that every time I think of this in the future I will cringe with embarrassment damn rosary hell why well, I'm going to a southern accent the a terrible southern accent oh okay I check the speed mom uh, the speeder meter I'm going to I'm going to my regular voice the regular talk I'm driving more cautiously than I would on any other occasions and I know it's the memory of two penetrating green eyes gazing at me and his stern voice telling me to drive carefully I shake my head he's more like a man double his age forget it Bella 
I scold myself. I decide that all in all, it's been a very interesting experience, but that I shouldn't dwell on it. Put it behind you. After all, I never have to see him again. I immediately cheered by the thought, so I searched on the MP3 player, sit back, turn the indie rock music up loud, and head down the I-5, pushing down the accelerator, knowing that I can drive as fast as I want. These just say that you're gonna drive cautiously. Lady, right here, cautiously. I'm in driving more cautiously than I would, but no, you're gonna accelerate it. As I park outside our apartment, I know Rose is going to want a blow by blow account and she can be ten assists. Well, at least she said the mini this. Hopefully, I won't have to elaborate much beyond that. We live in a gated community of lovely duplex apartments. I'm lucky. Will's parents have bought it for her and I help with the rent. It's been home for the last four years. Privilege. Living a family privilege. Bella. <laughs> I mean, Bella, you're back. Rose is sitting in our living area, surrounded by books. She's been studying for finals, though she's still dressed in her pink flannel pajamas that are decorated with little pink rabbits. These PJs she reserved for the aftermath of breakup with boyfriend, illnesses, and general moody depression. Now she just wants to impress you, lady. Bella, she bounces up to me and hugs me hard. I told you. I was beginning to worry. I expected, I mean, <laughs> I was beginning to worry. I expected you back soon. Sorry, the interview went on longer than anticipated. I hand her the mini this. Bella, thanks so much for doing this. I owe you. I know. How was it? What was he like? Oh no, here we go. The Wesley. Oh, so this is actually Bella had. I thought Wesley gonna say that. Damn it. Okay. Oh no. Here we go. The Worsley Hell and Chris and Christian. I struggle to answer her question. I'm glad it's over and I don't have to see him again. He was rather intimidating. You know, he's very focused, intense, even and young, really young. She gazed at me endlessly. Yes, Wells. Why didn't you give me a biography? He made me feel such an idiot for doing such a basic research. I frowned at her. Mostly he was cautious, formal, slightly stuffy, like his own before his time. He doesn't talk like a 20 something man. How old is he anyway? He's 27. She, Bella, I'm sorry, I didn't think. Let me have the meaning this and I'll get onto it. You look better. Do you eat your soup? Yes, I did, and it was delicious as usual, and I'm feeling better. She smiles at me in gratitude. Anyway, I had to run. I can still make my shift at Newton. Bella, you'll be exhausted. I'm fine. I'll see you later. I thought they were going to talk, but oh well. Since I started at WSU, some co I think that's the college name, I had worked at Newton's. It's the largest company warehouse in Portland area. So over the four years I lived here, I've come to know a bit about camping, though I've never been keen myself. I'm much more of a curl up with a book in a comfy chair in front of a fire kind of girl. I am glad I make my, my shift. It gives me something to focus on that isn't Edward calling. We're busy. It's the start of the summer season and we have the first wave of tourists to attend. Mrs. Newton is pleased to see me. Bella, I thought you weren't going to make it today. My appointment didn't make take as long as predicted. I can do a couple hours. Well, I'm pleased to see you. It's busy. She sends me out to the stock room to start restocking shelf and I'm soon absorbing the task. Rosalie is busy typing on her laptop wearing headphones when I return at 8.30. Her nose is still pink, but she has her teeth 
into a story, so she's off typing fiercely. I'm thoroughly drained. Story shouldn't it be an essay, <laughs> cause it's their final. And I slump onto the couch, thinking of the essay. Yeah, I'm talking about the essay. I had to finish, and all the revision I had hoped to do today. You've got some good stuff here, Bella. Well done. I didn't believe you didn't take him up on his offer to show you around. He obviously wanted to spend more time with you, she gives me a fleeting crystal look. I flush, and my heart rate inexplicably increases. That wasn't the reason, surely. He just wanted to show me around so that I can see that he was lord of all he surveyed. I realize I am biting my lip and hope that Wells doesn't notice. She seems absorbed in her transcription. I hear what you meant about form. Did you take any notes? She asks. Um, no, I didn't. That's fine. I can make a good article with it. Shame I didn't have some original photo. He's a good looking son of a bitch, isn't he? I flush. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, come on, Bella. Even you can't be immune to his looks. She arches a perfect eyebrow me. I decide to distract her with flattery. Always a good boy. You probably would have got a lot more out of him. I think you did a pretty good job. Uh, pretty good, Bella. Bell. Oh, I was confused for a moment. Let me reread that part. I think you did pretty good, Bells. Come on, he practically offered you a job. Given that I forced this on you at the last minute, he did really well. She glances up at me, spectacularly, and I quickly escape from the couch into the kitchen and make myself a sandwich. So what do you really think of him? She's so inquisitive. Why can't you just let this go? He's very driven, controlling, arrogant, scary, really but very charismatic. I can't understand the fascination, I say truthfully, hoping it will shut her up once and for all. You fascinated by men. That's the first, she notes. Let me drink. My throat is dry. I busy myself in the kitchen so she can't see my face. Why did you want to know if he was gay and in Incidentally, I was mortified asking that question. Well, whenever he's in the society pages of the papers, he's never got a date. Well, it was embarrassing. The whole thing was embarrassing. I'm glad I never had to lay eyes on him again. Oh, Bella, it can't have been that bad. I think he sounds quite taken with you. Will you like a sandwich? Yes, please. We talk no more of Edward calling. Thank heavens, and I'm able to sit at the dining table with Wells and finish my essay on whatever language that is. Test of the upper veil. <laughs> actually saying I actually say that in English. But it's not English. Dame that dame, but that woman was in the wrong place at the wrong time in the wrong century. By the time I'm finished it's midnight. Rose had wisely gone to bed, and I make my way to my room exhausted. But pleased that I accomplished so much for a Monday. As I curl up in my bed, I close my eyes and I'm instantly asleep. That night, I dream of green eyes, dark places, and bleak white cold floors. For the rest of the week, I throw myself very... Uh, I, I can't pronounce this. I could pronounce in my head, but not my voice. Enthusiastically, I hope I could pronounce. I, yeah, I hope that's. I hope that's well. That's good. <laughs> Into my revision and work at the Newton Place. Rose is reading her last edition. Rose is reading her last edition of Eyewitness before she has to. Relinquish it to the new editor and also studying. By Wednesday, she's much better, so I don't have to endure the sight of her pink flannel to, 
too many rabbit PJs. I called my mom in Florida to check on her, but also so that she can wish me good luck for my final exam. She proceeds to tell me about her latest venture into candle making. My mother is all about new business ventures. Basically, she's bored at home and wants something to occupy her time. But she was the intention. She has the intention span of a goldfish. It will be something new next week. She worries me. I hope she's not mortgage mortgage the house to finance this latest scheme. I hope Phil, her re relatively new young husband, is keeping an eye on her. Now that I'm no longer there. <laughs> yes. Women like a young, young men. They like young men, especially those in their fifty. Hard things with you, Bella. For a moment, I hesitated, and I have her full attention. I'm fine, Bella. Have you met someone? Wow, how does she do that? The excitement in her voice is impalpable. No, Mom, it's nothing. You'll be the first to know if I do. I thought that was Rose, but no, that that was Mom. Ugh, how drift off my mind is. Bella, you really need to get out more, honey. You worry me. She also worry you too. Mom, I'm fine. How's fit? How's Phil? As every distraction is always the best policy. She likes to distract people. Okay, change the subject. After my conversation, I called Charlie, my dad. That's a brief conversation. Well, not so much a conversation, but a series of one-sided grunts in response to my gentle coaxing. Charlie is not a talker, but he is. But he's still alive. Still watching sports on TV. Still fishing. <laughs> All is well with him. Wow. Just like in a movie. On Friday night, Rose and I debate what to do with our evening. We want we want a night off from revision and student newspaper. The doorbell rang. Standing at our door is my good friend Jake with a bottle of champagne. Wow, Jake! Great to see you. I give him a quick hug. Come in. I've known Jake for years. We've grown up together, but only for two weeks at a time every summer since I was two years old. His dad and Charlie are the best of buddies. Charlie dealing with the aftermath of his divorce. Jake's dad, a widower, we made mud pies, scrape our knees, and fought evil, to, evil together as kids. Jake always brought uh, out the tomboy in me. You know, reading that part, just a bit. It's like Jake, Dad, and Charlie are together as a couple. <laughs> I love him dearly, but as a friend, I'm so proud of him. He's the first in his family to go to university, and he's studying engineering. He's so bright, but his real passion is photography, photography, Photogra photography. Yes, yes, that's how I pronounce. He has a real eye for a great picture. I have news. He grins a big white tooth smile at me, his dark eyes twinkling. Don't tell me. You managed not to get kicked out for another week. I tease him and he scowls play for me. The Portland Gallery is going to exhibit my photo for next month. Oh, Jake, that's amazing. Congratulations. I'm so delighted for him. I hug him again. Way to go, Jake. I could put this in the newspaper. Nothing like a late ed editorial change on a Friday evening. Rose grins at him. Well, let's celebrate. I want you to come to the opening. Jake looks intentionally at me. I flush. Both of you, of course, he adds. We are good friends, but I know deep down inside that he likes to be more. He's cute, hot even, my oldest friend who knows me so well, but he's just not for me. Wesley often teases me that I'm missing the need of boyfriend gene, but the truth is, I just haven't met someone who, well, who I'm attracted to. In my heart, I'm hoping for trembling knees, heart in my mouth, butterflies in my belly, sleepless nights. Sometimes I wonder if there's something wrong with me. 
perhaps I spend too much long in the company of my literary romantic heroes and consequently my ideals and expectations are far too high like every other people but I know in reality nobody ever made me feel like that except very recently no an unwelcome still small voice whispered in my subconscious I banished the thoughts immediately I am not going there not after the painful interview yes I have dreamed about him most nights but that's just to process the awful interview out of my system surely I, I don't think so I watch Jake as he's opening the bottle of champagne. He's in jeans and a t-shirt, tall, all shoulders and muscle, bronze skin, dark hair and burning dark eyes. Yes, Jake's pretty, pretty hot, but I think he's finally getting the message. We're all just friends. It's so easy to be in his company, especially when he's as happy as he is today. I think you're thinking of him as a brother because you guys grew up together. Making but mud pie, and uh, two dad hang out together like they're actually like a couple. Mm. Sad as the store is a nightmare, we besage with tourists, Mister and Missus Newton, me and the other two part timers are rushed off our feet. There's a lull at lunchtime, and Missus Newton asks me to check out on some orders while I'm sitting behind the counter at the till. I'm engrossed in the task, checking catalog numbers against the item we need and what's been ordered. The Newton haven't yet caught up with technology, so they still run a paper ordering system. The shop is quite for, quiet for the first time all day and I can give the task my full attention. Then for some reason I glance up and find myself Lock into the bold green gaze of Edward Collin, who's standing at the counter, staring at me intentionally. Okay, yeah, that's that's it for chapter chapter three. So, gonna end chapter three.